For this is the day that the Lord has made. We have come together rejoicing and glad in it as we join in worshiping God in spirit and in truth for what a mighty God we serve. And let us join in giving God the praise as our praise team leads us in song. Praise him. Blessed Savior, he's worthy to be praised. So let us praise God from whom all blessings flow and give him all the praise because he is worthy of all of our praise. For the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him as we continue in our worship. We will be led in prayer and scripture by Sister Patricia Dean. And in between the prayer and scripture, we'll have another song by the praise team. Let us follow the order of service as outlined. Precious Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to come before you one more time to worship your holy and righteous name. 
We thank you, Lord, for the presence of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank you for forgiving us of our sins. Father, we thank you, Lord, for blessing our pastor, the Reverend Dr. Ronald L. Owens, with the word, Lord. The word that reminds us, Lord, that the battle is not ours, that it's yours. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your presence. We ask that you continue to bless our pastor, his family, the ministerial staff, and all who are listening. In the precious name of Jesus, we say, Amen. This morning comes from the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verses 8 through 9. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me, a scene in me, put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. Amen. Thank you very much, Sister Pat Dean, for our scripture lesson. And all who are leading us in worship, our praise team. As we join together, we join God in the word. Through the worship experience, we are sharing in our many outreach ministries, relationship building, and discipleship making as God is growing God's kingdom one person at a time. And we want you to know that you are included as one of those persons. And if you are looking for a church home, you have found one here at Mount Olive. So welcome to the house of God called Mount Olive. And we want to say thank you very much, Mount Olive, for how you continue to make God's love known to families during their time of bereavement, 
as you continue to reach out to Sister Catherine Joyce's family as they grieve her loss and prepare for the celebration of life service, which will be on Wednesday at First Christian Church, the viewing from 11 to noon and the funeral service at noon. So thank you for doing what you do in so much, such a loving way, and that's making God's love known to all families during their time of bereavement. And thank you for how you continue to support the ministry through your giving as we give unto the Lord out of that which God has so richly blessed each and every one of us with. This is an opportunity for us to show God that we are good stewards of that which God has so richly blessed each one of us with. As we prepare now for our tithe and offering, we invite you to join with us in our stewardship prayer. If you would, at this time, join us as we pray and give ourselves to God as well as our offering unto him. Let us pray the stewardship prayer. Father, I stretch my hand unto thee in obedience with faithfulness and thanksgiving. You have blessed me, Lord, and have honored your word and kept all your promises. So I give, not with a stingy spirit, but with a cheerful heart. Here, Lord, consecrate it, sanctify it, now multiply it for your use. In Jesus' name, I bring it now, and all God's people say, amen. As you are preparing your offering, we give you an opportunity to share through our cash app, through our Give a Plus account, or you can mail it into the post office box, which is up on your screen. And while you are preparing your offering, our praise team will bless us in another song. I was thinking the other day about the joy that came my way. It took away my frown and all those things that had me down. I thought about all those times when I was walking around in the days. But now I stand before you with nothing but praise. Oh Lord, oh, Lord we, praise we praise you. Oh Lord, oh, we praise you. Oh Lord, oh Lord, we praise you. Oh Lord, oh, Lord, we praise you. Oh Lord, oh, Lord, we praise you. I was thinking the other day about the joy that came my way took away my frown and all those things that had me down. I thought about all those times when I was walking around in the days, but now I stand before you with nothing but praise. Oh Lord, oh Lord, we praise you. Oh Lord, oh Lord, we praise you. Oh Lord, joy that came my way it took away my frown and all those things that had me down i thought about all those times when i was walking around in the days but now i stand before you with nothing but praise oh lord, oh, lord we pray we pray As we give thanks 
for the gifts. God, we thank you for another opportunity to show that we are good stewards of that which you have blessed us with, because we know that all things come from you, and you entrust that we will bring the tithe and the offering, and we've brought it now. Now bless it, multiply it, and use it for the ongoing building of your kingdom here on earth. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. As we are led in song by our praise team, our sermonic selection.
gratefulness. To each and every one of you, we greet you as we thank God for his grace and mercy to the Reverend Dana Swan, the Reverend Darlene James, Licentiate Sister Pat Dean and Licentiate Ivan Mako, to your families, my wife Gwendolyn, stewards, stewardesses, trustees, missionaries, class leaders, our young people, our technicians on our audio video, our musicians, and all of you, our officers, members, and friends, we greet you in the blessed name of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ to him. We give all glory and praise for we are grateful, grateful, grateful. And as I invite your attention to our scripture lesson, which is found in Philippians, the fourth chapter, verses eight and nine. As I am reading from the New International Version of the Bible, you read along from your particular translation as we listen together for the word of God. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. The things that we want to think on are the things that are right. Because right thinking leads to right living. And that's what we want to share with you today. The importance of the way you think impacts the life you live. When you think on things above and your mind is stayed on God, you live a life that's pleasing unto God. However, so often our minds get filled with the wrong things. They can get cluttered with so much garbage until we live trashy lives. Have you ever watched that show, Hoarders? These are people who never throw anything away. They cannot get around in the house because it's so piled up with trash, old newspaper, empty cereal boxes, cans from food that was eaten years ago, clothes piled up. Small paths are made to get to the kitchen, to the bathroom, and a little space to lay their head. Big walls of trash continue to be in the way. So you can imagine how it smells, how unhealthy it is. It gets so bad that the authorities must come and do an intervention. They asked the hoarder to throw out things. But the hoarder says, as you know, no, because the idol means so much to me. This is someone who keeps trash but cannot see it because it's so much clutter. They are so focused on holding on to everything, but do not realize it is limiting their lives. How many of us are hoarders in our minds? Because we do not let go of the clutter. Things that happened to us years and years ago, we continue to have those rerun movies playing over and over and over again. Sometimes living weary has become normal. We have done it for so long. 
Living guilty is what we are used to. We have gone around thinking we do not deserve to be blessed. We've made too many mistakes. We've let the recording play so long that we have accepted it. Or maybe living inferior, feeling less than. Perhaps this is how you were raised. Thoughts have always told you you are not going to be talented. You're not attractive. You don't have a good personality. We don't know any better. We believe those lies. And now our mind is cluttered. And today I want to free your mind of all of that clutter. I want to free you of those labels that they put on you. I want to free you from that bondage that you've been walking around in for so many years. It's easy to go around weary about our future, stressed over our finances, frustrated with our boss. We are tempted to live guilty because of the past mistakes and bitter over what did not work out. And we wonder why we don't enjoy life, why we are not passionate about our dreams, why we can't sleep at night. It is because our mind is cluttered. You were not created to live worried, guilty, bitter, or upset. If you're going to reach your destiny, you must clear out the clutter. You cannot stop negative things from coming, but you can keep them from staying. You don't have any control of what people say or do but you have all the control in the world of how you respond to it. You have all the control in the world of if you hold on to it, let it go. God wants you to let it go and God's gonna do an intervention and clear out the weary, the offenses, the guilt, the bitterness, the lies, impurities, disrespect, injustices, and all those things that clutter your life. Like the authorities, they do not make the hoarder throw away trash. God will not make you throw away that trash in your mind. God gives you a choice, but I'm here today to tell you I recommend that if the Holy Spirit tells you that it is not of God, that you make a decision to throw it out. In our text, Paul calls his readers to a life free of clutter and trash that keeps them living in the dumps. He lists these virtues to help get rid of the clutter so we can live abundant and peaceful lives. Thinking on these things are not an end, but preparation for purpose for life, an abundant and peace for life, a life in which we can enjoy the favor of God, a life in which we can walk in the peace of God. The admonition is to think of the great and positive facts and virtues of God's ways. Think on things which are above. The mind is a vital factor in shaping our human character. Right thinking results in right living, which results in the presence of God's peace, a peace that passes all understanding, a peace that the world won't give you. It's a peace that only Jesus gives, and this peace lets you know that your heart is not to be troubled if you believe in God. And in Jesus Christ, you don't have to worry about anything. Paul tells the Philippians how they should think. Think on spiritual things. So I want to share with you these virtues to help you to clear out the clutter and think right so you can live right. First, whatever is true, we must separate truth from falsehood truth from the lies. Don't go around living a lie. The truth will always stand 
even if it's pushed down, it will rise again. The truth will set us free. Truth is decency and becomingness in our behavior, suitable to our circumstances and conditions of life, a life that glorifies God, knowing what truth is. Let truth lead, direct, and influence your life and your behavior so that you will live a life that pleases God. Also, be honorable. Live a life that's worthy of respect as you are serious and have a good character. Your character is what you do when nobody is watching and people know that you are an upright and honorable person. Be just or agreeable to the rules of justice and righteousness in all your dealings with others. Know what is right and live righteousness before others. Be fair, be proper or right in the sense of being fully justified. Let your yes be yes and your no's no's and also be pure without any kind of impurities or mixture of sin. Live holy, innocent, and live a life that glorifies God because holiness means that we are separated and set apart to be used by God pertaining to being without moral defect or blemish, a life that gives God glory, a life that other people see and say that he or she must be a child of God, a life that is lovely. Whatever we do, have a good report that is a life that we are well spoken of as well as thought of. People know that we are known for our love. That's why we have to live our lives that men, women, boys, and girls will see our good works, glorify our Father, which is in heaven. That's why we have to make sure that what we present in our daily walk is pleasing unto God. As I return back to the hoarders, many have beautiful homes, but they can't enjoy them because of the trash. In the same way, if you don't clear out the clutter and find that which is not lovely or pleasing unto God and make sure that you clear out that which will keep you from going to a new level. Weary will keep you from rising higher. Living guilty will keep you from pursuing your dreams. Going around bitter will keep you from new opportunities. Somebody might have hurt you. They did you wrong. That's why you are bitter and upset. That happened years ago. Why are you still holding on to it? Why are you still sour over the person that walked away? Still upset over how you were raised, still bitter over the company that let go of you. Do you not know that that is like a hoarder? You are holding on to trash. They hurt you once, but you do not have to let them continue to hurt you. Don't let anybody keep you in bondage. Be free because those who Christ has set free are free indeed. As you live a life of freedom, be commendable, excellent, credible, worthy of praise, admirable, appealing, pertaining to a life that deserves approval of a good reputation. Your name is all you have, so don't let anybody 
disdain your name. Be excellent. Have quality of moral excellence. Don't settle for mediocrity. Outstanding goodness is yours. Virtue and excellence is your character. And whatever is praiseworthy, live that which is praiseworthy, that people might see that you are truly a child of God. Finally, put it all into practice. Practice makes perfect. The Philippians are to be guided both by Paul's teachings and Paul's example. The list of virtues that Paul asks the Philippians to think about are emphasized with whatever. He tells the Philippians to look for the true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, and excellent, and praiseworthy everywhere around them. And he lets them know that I live a life that has exemplified these virtues, and I am walking in the peace of God. And even a richer promise is that we will walk with God. God will be with us as we practice what we preach. So in closing, think right and live right. Stop nurturing resentment. And think about what the honorable, what is just, pure, pleasing, commendable, excellent, and praiseworthy in yourself and in others. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, begins with appreciating the good points of those around us, even when we are in conflict with them. No two people will agree about everything all the time. And many times the conflict is in us. And we have to be willing to work through the conflict. After all, they are people who are of Christ, just like you and I are. Help us to love each other because love covers a multitude of sin. When we make mistakes, guilt will come. Condemnation telling us how we don't measure up. You can hold on to it, go around down on yourself, or you can let it go and say, Father, thank you that I am forgiven. Every time the remembrance comes back to you, say, I am forgiven. Every time the remembrance of what someone did to you comes back to you, say, I have forgiven them. Thank you that I am redeemed. And if anybody asks you who I am, just tell them that I am redeemed. The past is over. This is a new day. Move forward. When you go through a disappointment, something doesn't work out, you can hold on to it, leave discouraged, or you can let it go and say, God, I know you have better things for me. I know your plans for me all for good. I know you're directing my steps. When the medical report is not good, when the contract doesn't go through, when you're in a legal situation and you can hold on to it, live wearied, thinking that all hope is gone, you don't have to continue to think that way. You can let it go and say, God, I know you are fighting my battle. I know what's meant for my harm. You are turning around. For my advantage, I may not see my way, but God, I know you have a way. Think right, live right, and watch God clear up the clutter and pour out his favor on your life. And you will live a life of one that is honorable, just, pure, pleasing, commendable, excellent, and praiseworthy. So right now, will you agree with God? Will you agree with me that all through the day, 
this recording should be playing in your mind that I am a masterpiece. I'm one of a kind. I'm talented. I'm attractive. I'm favored. I'm empowered. I have seeds of greatness. When you dwell on what God says about you, it will automatically clear up and clear out the clutter. Fear can't stay where faith is. Discouragement can't stay where hope is. Guilt can't stay where forgiveness is. Meteorocracy can't stay where greatness is. Great are you. Great you are because God has created you and me for greatness. Let us walk in our greatness and declare that God is working things out for me. And because I know that God is doing a new thing, that God is pouring out God's favor, I'm going to give him praise. I'm going to magnify him. I'm going to glorify him. I'm going to tell God, thank you. Thank you. Clearing out my clutter. Thank you for giving me a mind of Jesus Christ. Thank you for lifting me up out of my pit, turning my feet on a solid ground, and my soul cries out, says, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. And as we extend the invitation of Christian discipleship, we want to offer Christ to you and give you the opportunity for you to live a righteous life by making sure that you think on those right things and live a right life. It begins with you accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you are viewing and listening and you've never accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, we invite you right now to accept Christ. And what we're going to do is pray the prayer of salvation with you. And we believe if you pray this prayer sincerely, you will be saved. Pray these words. I declare with my mouth, Jesus is Lord. And believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. And with my heart that I believe unto salvation it is with my mouth that I confess and am saved. We believe if you pray that prayer that you are saved. And now what we want you to do is reach out to one of our disciples and let them know that you accepted Christ and they will share with you how to follow Christ in baptism if you've never been baptized. And if you are not a member of a church, invite you to join the Mount Olive Amy Church family. So call the prayer line number that's on your screen, or you can make a post on our Facebook page and we'll get back with you because we believe that the day is the day of salvation. And now we want to just offer an opportunity to extend the altar to anyone who has a prayer need that they want to bring to God right there in your home. I'm going to give you a moment to go before God, and then I'm going to join in a collective prayer. Take a moment and pray. God, it is in your presence that we come as we thank you that you are our creator and you know all about us. Thank you for your love. And as you manifest your love in us, help us to make it known to one another and help us, God, to think right and live right. As we lift before you the prayer requests that have gone up and we pray, God, that you meet each and every need, those families who are in bereavement, 
bring healing to the wound of grief. Those who are under the care of the healthcare team, that you use the healthcare team to bring healing to their bodies. That person who accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we rejoice along with the angels in heaven and celebrate. And we pray that you will continue to help us to keep our minds stayed on you, clear of the clutter, so that we will live peaceful and victorious lives. And now, God, we thank you. We claim it. We believe it. We receive it. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Let us now affirm what we believe as believers, the affirmation of our faith, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, make of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, third day rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From then he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Church universal, communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Receive now the benediction. And now... May the love of God, the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit rest through and abide with you now and forevermore. And the people of God said, Amen. Take a moment and fellowship with one another. <laughs>